Hello everyone and welcome back to the Tavern. In this episode of Tavern Talks, we'll be discussing two topics that I chose. One being the overdue need of a concept vehicle this year, or another concept vehicle, and my hopes that it might be one of the land-based mining vehicles that we saw. Uh, we first saw this back in CitizenCon this just, just this last year. And the other uh, topic would be the upcoming changes to the thruster efficiency, uh, the curves and aerodynamics that uh, they're, they're be coming in the 3.10 patch. Uh, looks like it's in the polishing phase, but without further ado, let's get on and start talking about some of these topics. So first up, um, we haven't had, but I think one concept vehicle sale this year, and that was the, uh, the G2. And I'm hoping we see another one, if not real soon, by the, definitely by the end of the year. And I'm hoping that that's going to be possibly the concept mining vehicle that we saw in CitizenCon. So the image they showed us uh, looked to be like a smaller mining vehicle. Now I know they have the, the Sidness or the Sidness, however you want to pronounce it. But the, uh, the spider type mining vehicle and it looks to be quite a larger vehicle. So um, I'm not sure how we would transport that. So until we get a little bit further idea or information how that might work, we can talk about that a little bit later. But the one I would like to look at is the one that you see that is the, uh, the smaller version. And I believe they talked about it being a smaller version that could uh, fit into the back of different ships. It was one of the key points that they had mentioned. And that's what brings me to the, uh, the topic today that I wanted to discuss with you guys and why I think that this might be something that we see pretty soon. Um, so I, I got to doing a little bit of thinking about this and how welcomed it would be for players to have a small and affordable concept uh, come out, whether straight to flight or possibly in the near future for this year, like I said, but a vehicle that would fit into the back of a lot of common uh, cargo transport type ships, uh, i.e. your Cutlasses, your Freelancers, um, uh, Valkyries, anything with a fold down ramp or lift like a Taurus um, or Constellation class waiting on the Taurus <laughs> but something that uh, can carry a small vehicle like this and it would give the player the ability to get into mining without having to afford or have a prospector or a mole or something along those lines right now and that would also open up that gameplay and the reason that I wanted to talk about this today is because I think with a tech that CIG has come out with with these cave systems that a really cool gameplay loop could be incorporated possibly pretty easy. So my idea was that we have caves. Why do we not have caverns? Why do we not have, uh, instead of underground man-sized caves or things that are only accessible for, the, for a person, we have a lot of hills. We have a lot of could be soon to be sort of mountain size uh, land formations right now. So if CIG were to use this same tech to make an opening that was about the size of say an Ursa, no, no bigger that a prospector could not get inside of, it would create a need for a vehicle or the use of vehicles to go and mine inside of these caves or caverns as I like to call them. And so picture this scene. So you you have a cutlass or a freelancer and you want to do some mining. Mining is a pretty good trade right now to be into. So you load your cutlass with your whatever the name of the mining vehicle is that can fit in the back of your cutlass. Or maybe you load it with one or two of them uh, or three. And a couple of your buddies, you go, you land on the planet next to one of these caverns that are in the side of a hill and you unload your vehicles, drive them into the cave. These caves can spawn random amounts of uh, deposits for the mining, and your group or you go ahead and collect them using the, the equipment, the machine, the concept vehicle. Um, I keep saying concept vehicle. I would like to see it straight to flight, but you get the idea. So, also, you could still do the hand mining in these tunnels or these caverns, um, but further along the lines of using a vehicle, I got to thinking about 
you could use an Ursa Rover since, or the Cyclone that carries the uh, one SCU. Ursa probably being more ideal because you can set these boxes that you can uh, set out inside the Ursa. Uh, so you drive the Ursa inside this large cavern in the side of these big mountain sides and you park it, do your mining, load the Ursa up. The Ursa can drive it the distance so you don't have to run it or hoof it on foot outside of the mountain or the, uh, the cavern. Load it back onto your ship, go and collect your, your, your pay. So, hopefully, you're sitting the, the bigger picture that I was thinking that would, that would bring a lot of different gameplay options to the, the mining field and also the people who don't have Prospector or whatnot, but could possibly afford one of these land-based mining vehicles. But that's my idea, uh, short and sweet, for the possibility of a land vehicle that could do mining. Um, I love the idea of it fitting into the back of a smaller ship like that, a freelancer, cutlass, fill in the blank. Uh, I love the fact that it could be an opening to go into a couple of caverns um, using vehicles, basically incorporating vehicles more into the verse. Right now, there's not a lot of reasons to use vehicles. There's some. You can, uh, you can sandbox some ideas for combat or whatnot, but right now there's not a lot of... Uh, reasons to break out uh, rovers and, and vehicles that can haul things but uh, with a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of creativity and and a uh, little bit on CIG's part I think we could get some pretty awesome gameplay. Uh, next up I wanted to talk about the flight model changes through the thruster efficiency curves and aerodynamics uh, work that's being done in the 3.10 patch. So it reads that the uh, thruster efficiency curves will drastically change the way thrusters work in atmosphere. Uh, with the work will include a major update to aerodynamics for the ships, resulting in far more dynamic and believable behavior for ships in atmosphere. So key being atmosphere here, and I can't help but think back to, I'm going to say it, the hover mode days. Now I know hover mode was not very widely received by many and hence why it went the way of the dodo. Um, I too understand that a lot of people had trouble with it and uh, I'd like to share some of my opinions on that and how I think that they could have improved what was in base a fairly good system. Um, so hover mode gave a lot of people trouble. Um, I think it gave more people who were mouse and keyboard users trouble because it, it just mechanically messed with the uh, ability to use your mouse to navigate things. With that said, uh, I would love to see a re-engineered, rethought out plan for hover mode with the caveat of changing a few things. One of those I think has already been implemented into the game and if um, you're familiar with the Gladius the Pisces, the new HUD system, the new way of controlling the thruster curves like the speed limiter, the acceleration limiter. These things have been implemented in this new HUD and they work in unison instead of like it did back in the patch that had the hover mode where you individually controlled these things and that was actually my biggest uh, problem with hover mode was it was a juggling act to balance those two uh, depending on what kind of ship you were in because the acceleration limiter changed depending on uh, the size of the vessel. So let's say you were flying something like a Caterpillar or a larger ship than that. It was usually around like 40 something percent and that would keep your ship from doing that crazy darting off in a different direction out of control sort of uh, maneuver. So with that said, the new HUD system uh, automatically controls that thruster input if you haven't noticed but dials back the the thruster acceleration and you have a lot more control over the ship uh, if you haven't experienced it yet just find someone with a, a gladius or a rent a gladius or a pisces and uh, see for yourself that it's just a lot more controllable down below that uh, red line speed um moving on from the the hover mode um but moving towards what i'm what I'm hoping the atmospheric flight changes is 
the way that our ships behave in atmosphere and the one thing that's near and dear to my heart is how I see too many ships overperforming in atmosphere or just hanging at some sort of strange unrealistic angle upside down or straight down that behavior that kind of irks me when it comes to immersion I know immersion is huge for people so it's one of the things for me that just breaks the game when it when I see it happening so I'm hoping with these thruster efficiency curves that this is going to be CIG's way to go back and revisit the concept of what they were trying to do with hover mode and allow ships to have a certain amount of thrust or direction that allows a ship to only hover in certain types of situations or attitudes uh, of the ship itself. Uh, of course, we'll see with these, but overall it sounds good. It sounds like they're working on the, the aerodynamics of the ship, and I would love to see that um, because I'm, I'm going to keep comparing this back to when hover mode was a thing. Um, in atmosphere flight is just not there for me. I know that they still use sort of a uh, less or powered down model of the uh, space flight for as, as atmospheric flight. Uh, they they kind of dial it back a little bit and that's what you see and for me and several others I've talked to about it, it's just not what you want it to be. It's kind of a blocky movement that um, doesn't flow very well. There seems to not have any inertia to the ships. Uh, even the, the sort of simulated sliding or whatnot that you get out of turning really fast in a fighter just doesn't seem very realistic. And I'm hoping with these aerodynamics that a lot of the uh, lift versus drag and gravity uh, comes into play and we start seeing a little bit more realistic flight model. But I remember when the, uh, the hover mode was a thing, turning and dogfighting, fighting uh, any type of maneuvers seemed a lot more realistic because as you would go through a hard turn, the hover mode would kind of transfer some of that inertia into what was sort of like a flared out sort of maneuver and gave a lot more realistic feel to the turning. But um, tell me what your thoughts are. I know this is a lot of opinion based and I would love to hear your opinion as well because that's what Tavern Talks is. It's all about opinions and what you guys think, telling me what you think, and I would love to hear it. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and leave a like if you got something out of this video or leave a dislike if you didn't like it at all, if you hated hover mode. <laughs> but either way, uh, consider sharing also, guys. It really helps the channel. And as always, thank you for making Tuns Tavern your stop on your way through the verse.